Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special edition of OAA Now here. It is the blue edition of the 2024 OAA Football Preview. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminus on OAA with Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OAA with Television. Last week we previewed the um, gold division, and this week we're going to preview the blue, next week we're going to preview the white, and then two weeks we're going to preview the red division. So let's, without further ado, let's we'll start with the um, longest division in the OA this year, the blue, which contests of seven teams in this league. So let's start off with the Red Hawks of Troy Athens. It's a team that's changed a lot in the last few years, um, hoping to get back into the playoffs for the first time since 2011. So here's Athens football coach Tom Cook at the podium talking about the Red Hawks. First off, uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to Coach Vernon and Rochester High School for putting this on every year. Uh, it's, you know, uh, it's not an easy task. Uh, and uh, just want to say thanks. I, don't, I, I guess I didn't realize it's been 10 years, but that's, uh, uh, but thank you for all those, uh, all these 10 years. Um, I'm Tom Cook. Uh, this is uh, Athens High School football. Um, we're excited for this season. Uh, we've had uh, a good off season. We've had a lot of kids um, that are multi-sport athletes and, and they've really uh, bought into our off season training program as well. And because of that, we're, we're coming in this year, uh, you know, stronger and more athletic uh, than we have uh, in the past few years. Um, we've also, like we're excited to see like some of the young players that we've had over the past few years. Um, you know, and how they developed, uh, you know, as they've gotten older. Uh, we have six returners, returning starters on defense and seven on offense. All of these guys uh, here are uh, returning starters from last year. I'll let them uh, introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Corbin Crown. Uh, I play tight end and linebacker. Uh, Nathan Piggott, junior tight end and safety. Kanan Hanbury, junior running back linebacker. Elliot Booth, senior DB. Alex Logan, senior safety. Um, our schedule this year uh, is uh, improved uh, since last year. Uh, we're looking forward to that. We're, you know, uh, we're hoping that, like, with the direction that we're going with our program, um, you know, uh, we can, you know, compete against. Uh, the high-level teams here in, in uh, the OAA. Uh, just want to say good luck to everybody this season. Hopefully, everybody stays healthy, and thank you for thank you for having us. When you look at the Red Hawks this year, there are a lot of question marks. When you look at Athens, of course, going to a um, different offense, different um, philosophy. So I caught up with Coach Tom Cook talking about some question marks that the Red Hawks have heading into the season. All right, we got the coach of the Red Hawks, Coach Tom Cook here. Coach, um, last season you guys changed offense, as we mentioned in the podcast. How has everything been going for you this off season? Uh, we've had a really good off season. Um, you know, we've had like what I like about this team coming in. We have a lot of like multi-sport athletes. Um, you know, they've uh, you know we we've got like basketball players, like kids that uh, run track, lacrosse, uh, and then we also have like a bunch of kids. Um, you know, including those kids that have really bought into our off-season training program. Um, you know, so we're coming in stronger uh, and more athletic than we have in the past couple of years. And so, you know, I think it'll it'll allow us to add a, a few things to you know our our system that we established last year, um, and and really help us improve like on both sides of the ball. Really, talk about your schedule. I mean, it's really interesting to start. I mean, like, how's that schedule going for you guys? Yeah, our schedule is much improved since last year. Um, you know, uh, we opened with Seaholm, who's you know won our division like several times. We've got some uh, teams that have come like down from the white. Uh, so our schedule, you know, we're not. It's the OAA, and it's a it's a tough league, and so we're gonna uh, every week is gonna be you know a tough game. But you know, um, just the way we've been training, like our preparation, the you know attitude of the kids this year, like we're we're looking forward to that challenge. What are your expectations here, Coach? Expectation, we're going to play better football. Um, like I said, you know, we have, um, you know, we have a tough schedule. Uh, and, and, like, really, I think we're going to be in, like, a lot of tight games. And it's going to come down to, 
you know, uh, our, our kids, you know, their preparation and, um, you know, their their mental resolve to overcome obstacles because we're going to face them throughout the season. So, um, you know, we're hoping for big things, and I think the kids, you know, uh, this year are going to get it done. Thank you very much, Coach. Yep. Thanks. I also had a podcast with Coach Tom Cook as well, so if you want to take a look at the podcast, it'll be on the um, blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. Um, so I do have a podcast there, but notice the difference with the Troy Athens logo. They got a new logo this year, new field. Um, just everything, you know, looks to be one Athens. So, you know, when you, when you look at the, um, the logo, that, that's really been the telling part of, the, of Troy Athens is the new logo that they have this upcoming season. Um, when you look at the schedule for Troy Athens, it's really interesting. I mean, they open up the year, of course, the league, of course, it's a seven-team league. So they open up the year week one against Seaholm. And that's an interesting matchup between the team that runs the wing tee and the team that runs the veer. So that should be a really, really interesting matchup between two teams that are really, you know, that's going to run the ball out. It will be a quick game, that is for sure, when you look at that matchup. Week two, they take on Berkeley. And that should be another interesting matchup. I mean, these are two teams that know each other quite well. Um, I know Berkeley's got a new coach in Casey Humes taking over that team. So that should be a fun matchup there. Week three, they take on Oak Park, and we're going to know a lot about Athens. I mean, Oak Park's got some proven athletes. Um, they got, I mean, Oak Park's a team that's really, really interesting this year. So when I look at the Red Hawks, I mean, when I look at the Red Hawks taking on the Knights, that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, week four, they take on Farmington. Um, I know um, it should be a really interesting matchup. Um, you know, that wing T that Athens likes to run, taking on a team, a, a spread team like Farmington, they're going to want to spread you out. So that should be a fun matchup there. September 27th, they take on North Farmington. That's another interesting matchup there, of course. Um, you know, that should be a fun one there. Um, week number um, six, I mean, like, you know, week six, they host Clarkson. That's difficult. That's brutal. I mean, Clarkston, we know, has got the Bowman Twins. Um, this is going to be a tall order for Athens in that match against Clarkston. Um, obviously, you know, Clarkston's a D1, perennial D1, perennial powerhouse. So that'll be a tough match for Clarkston. Week number um, seven, they take on Bloomfield Hills. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, that should be a fun one to watch for sure. Um, week eight, the rivalry game with Troy. A little surprised, you know what I mean, with Coach Cook, what he said about the rivalry with Troy. You know what I mean? It's, it's really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, but it should be a good battle between um, – now, Troy's had – Troy Athens' number the last few years, so that should be a really interesting matchup there. And then week nine, they take on Frazier. It's a rematch of a 14-6 Ramblers win over the Red Hawks last season. Um, that really – you know, really didn't expect Troy Athens to struggle like the way they did last year, and especially in that loss to Frazier where they only were held to six points. And, you know, when you look at Troy Athens this year, I expect them to score more points this year. Um, defensively, they, I expect them to be better defensively. They, I mean, I know Coach Cook's really excited about this team, but, you know, you look at people in the media, they might not be as excited as, you know, when you look at Troy Athens this year, especially with the veteran leadership they have. Um, but there's a lot of questions when I look at Coach Tom Cook's team this year when you look at the Red Hawks. So that's my take on Troy Athens. I think they're going to be in for maybe a bounce back year, so we'll see what happens there. Um, let's look at the Blackhawks at Bloomfield Hills. Obviously, this is a team that was really, you know, struggled last year, 1-8. and eight. Um, A lot of question marks when you look at the Blackhawks. So Bloomfield Hills coach Jan Lloyd was not at media day, but his assistant was. Yeah. Thanks, Rochester, for having us here today. Uh, intro myself, uh, Bobby Patterson, assistant, uh, offense receivers coach at Bloomfield Hills, um, filling in for Coach Loria, Dan, today. Uh, I've been with Coach Loria since 08 when we used to be Lasser. Uh, my first year there was 08 when we went to the semis against Devin Gardner and Inkster, and uh, I've never looked back. And I uh, love being with the program, love being with Coach Loria, and uh, we've got a great group of kids that's uh, around Bloomfield. Uh, in the blue this year, uh, Bloomfield, uh, we're happy to be here, like I said, uh, ready to go starting Monday, Monday morning. Kids have been working hard this summer and in the off season, winter time. Um, the, the gentlemen I brought up here with me today, um, our captains, 
we got Evan Becker, running back, outside linebacker, senior. Jack Schaefer, offensive guard, DN. He's been a starter with us since his sophomore year. Uh, Sam Dorr, fullback, linebacker, senior. A um, few things, uh, strengths, our work ethic, um, our attitude's been great. Um, our offense and defensive line we're excited about um, up front this year. Um, we're young in the secondary. We're young at the receiver spot. Um, but hey, that's what us coaches here you know, love to do. We love to teach, and uh, that's what we uh, want to do. Um, we open up with a well-coached football uh, Troy high team. Um, should be fun night, fun season, and uh, good luck to all you guys this year. I've got warning signs this year for Bloomfield Hills, and I think, you know, there's some question marks. I know the coaches are excited, but I've got some serious concerns when I look at the Blackhawks this season. Um, when you look at that schedule, it is also very daunting when you look at it. I mean, open up with Troy week one. That's a very difficult matchup for them. Um, Troy, of course, Bloomby Hills, they're no strangers to one another. Um, so that'll be really interesting there. Week two, they take on Dearborn Divine Child at home. Um, that is a difficult match for Bloomby Hills considering, you know, Divine Child's had some success. Obviously, that's the school where Aiden Hutchinson went to for his high school. Uh, was at Dearborn Divine Child. Um, week three, they take on Seaholm. Rivalry game, of course, Seaholm runs severe. Bloomfield Hills, I mean, like, you know, they, they were competitive last year in that game, but Seaholm ended up winning that one uh, pretty handily there. Uh, week four, they take on North Farmington. Um, again, another top matchup there. Week five, Pontiac. I don't know how they match up with them there in that one, but. You know, it should be a really interesting matchup there um, between two teams that are, like, trying to, like, um, you know, develop identities, you know what I mean? Pontiac, obviously, last year had a really nice, um, you know, Pontiac last year won three games last year. Um, so for Coach Loria, that's going to be the key for them um, in that match with Pontiac. Week six, um, Farmington, that's a rematch. Last season, Bloopy Hills had a chance in that game against Farmington, but, it, but Farmington ended up winning that one really tight. Um, now, Farmington ended up losing one of their best players in that game. Now, that game's over at Bloomby Hill, so that should be really interesting there. Week number seven, um, week seven, they take on Troy Athens. Um, that'll be a very interesting matchup there of uh, two teams, you know what I mean? Like, we'll see where they're at in week seven. Week eight, I don't know how this team matches up with Clarkson. I mean, like, they don't match up really well with them. And I think that game's at Clarkson, too, which makes it worse, so. You know, so we'll see how Blue Bay Hills matched up with them there. And then week nine, they close out the year with Oak Park. And, you know, that's another interesting match for Coach Dan Laurie and the Blackhawks. Um, so when I look at the Blackhawks this year, team has got a lot of work to do. And, you know, a lot of questions, quarterback, running back. I mean, like, offensively, defensively, there, you name it, there's questions everywhere when you look at the Blackhawks this year. So Blue Bay Hills, I, they got some questions this year to really watch for. And I think that's a team that really, you know, they're going to be a team that really depends on is can they find, you know, that balance. And if they do, maybe some wins will be in line for them. So we'll see what happens over there, over at Bloomby Hills. So we'll see what happens. Um, next, let's go from Bloomby Hills. Let's go to Farmington here. Um, when you look at the Falcons, it was a rough year in the white last year for Farmington. And, you know, but now they're back in the blue. Um, they miss playing their arch rivals. They're going to get their rivals this year. So let's talk to, let's look at Farmington coach Jason Albright when he steps into the podium this year talking about the Falcons. I want to thank Rochester for uh, hosting this event. It's actually closer from my house than uh, driving into school every day. So it's a nice, nice change up. Um, it's my fourth year at Farmington High School as head coach. Um, my three seniors that I brought with us today, defensive lineman Justin Quinn, quarterback Julian Johnson and then linebacker and H-back uh, Daniel Bukai were all integral part of what we did last year. Now last year didn't end the way we wanted to and this group of seniors, uh, we have about eight, I think 18 seniors uh, that are returning that really took it to heart in the off season and really held everybody accountable in the weight room. Uh, probably one of our strongest groups that we've had uh, come through here in a couple years. So really impressive in their work ethic and what they've done this summer. Um, even avoiding all the heat and, and having to change up what we've been doing uh, conditioning wise, they take it in stride. So I'm really looking forward to 
uh, what they have, to, what they're going to bring on Friday nights. Um, really excited to be a part of the OAA Blue and, and compete against our rivals again this year, which we didn't get to last year, um, and uh, per, play a, a strong conference schedule as well as a, a strong off uh, out of conference schedule. Um, I think this year with our experience from uh, not having the best record in the uh, OAA last year, obviously, it uh, will help our kids grow and, and kind of have those learning life lessons and, and have a better successful year this year. Hope everybody stays healthy and best of luck. Thank you. So when you look at Farmington this year, there's some questions, but I do like their situation where they're at this year, being in the division where they're at. So I caught up with Coach Jason Albrecht to talk about the state of the Falcons in an interview. I got the coach of the Falcons, a fellow 06 classmate here, Coach Jason Albrecht here. Coach, um, obviously you look at, how has Julian been for you guys? This offseason he's done really well. He's worked uh, through the winter in the weight room, um, doing some skills training as well, speed training. So he's, he's definitely developed his game uh, into a lot stronger mold for us. Talk about that schedule. It's a very interesting schedule you open up. You're in the blue, obviously, so talk about that schedule. Yeah, I'm not used to uh, having a league opponent week one. Usually it's a uh, out of conference game, but um, you know Oak Park is going to be a really tough team. They got a lot of kids back, and I was just talk talking with Coach Carter, and it's you know it's going to be a battle. Like I coached against him back uh, when he first came to Oak Park, and like he he's a great coach and Hall of Famer in my book, and um, I'm looking forward to that challenge. And then we you know get a, a, a solid team versus a former uh, OAA coach and Billy Keenis out in Holly. So it's going to be, I think it's a great schedule that uh, will really push our kids to get ready for the playoffs, hopefully. What is the expectation this year, Coach? Um, I don't really give ever a, a win-loss total. I just want our kids to be as successful as they can and uh, build upon the work ethic they've developed since they've been in the program, and everything will take care of itself. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. I also did a podcast with Coach Albright as well, so I will post that up on the blog at saginabay4650.blogspot.com as well. So if you want to talk more about Farmington football, I have a podcast interview with Coach Albright also. So make sure you check a look on the, on the blog when the preview does come out for the blog. So when you look at Farmington, I mean, the schedule is interesting. Looks manageable when you look at it. You know, week one, Taking on Oak Park, um, that's going to be a big game for both teams um, to see where both teams are at. Um, and I think it's going to be a fun one because both teams, you know, are going to be motivated to have really strong years. They're struggling last year. So that should be a really fun week one between the Knights and the Falcons. Um, coaching matchup between Coach Albright and Coach Carter, really fun matchup there. Week two, Farm to takes on Holly. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I think, you know, obviously talked about the matchup between um, Coach Albright and then Coach Billy Keenis. Of course, Billy Keenis used to coach at Berkeley and also at Troy Athens before taking over the Holly job. And he also has defensive coordinator, former Lake Orion defensive coordinator, Dave Tooley. So that's going to be a really, really interesting matchup between the Falcons and the Broncos. Um, that should be a fun one. And then week three. You know, I missed this game last year. I really missed this game last year. Um, the battle for the Farmington Cup, the jug, going to be at Ron Holland this year. Um, Farmington has the, has the jug after an overtime win last year. Um, at the overtime win two years ago. Um, didn't play last year. Thank heavens this game's back on the schedule. And this is going to be a fun one. Farm to TV 10 is going to have a blast with this one, um, obviously. So that should be a fun matchup for sure there. Week number four, they take on Troy Athens. Another interesting matchup there. Week five, they take on Seaholm, um, which should be an interesting matchup there. Um, a battle of um, two teams, you know what I mean, run different styles of offense. Um, it's also a rematch game. Obviously, Farmton did knock off Seaholm um, a couple years ago where um, Farms and winning the um, Blue Division title end up going to the white, and look what happened there. Um, week number six, they take on Bloomfield Hills. Um, that should be another interesting matchup there. Week seven, Troy, you know, that should be an interesting matchup. And I think, you know, those two teams, 
you know, they know each other. It should be a fun matchup. Week eight, I think, is going to really test Farmington when they take on Lake Orion. Um, the drag, last year Lake Orion took it to Farmington a year ago. Um, now Lake Orion goes back to Farmington to take on the Falcons, and that should be a really interesting matchup. And then they close out the year week nine against Dearborn Heights Crestwood. Um, it's the first meeting between these two teams, but, you know, Farmington has had a history of going to the, um, going to um, Wayne County or going west into um, between Washington and Wayne County. So it should be a really interesting matchup for, um, <laughs> excuse me, Farmington. Um, so when I look at the Falcons this year, um, bounce back is basically the thing you look at with Farmington. Um, you can catch all the Falcon games, home games on Farmington TV 10 this year. So knowing them, they do a really good job over there at Farmington. So you can catch all the Falcon games also on Farmington TV 10. So they do a very good job over there. So let's go from Farmington to their arch rival, North Farmington. Um, when you look at the Raiders, um, the last few years has not been very good. Not been very kind for Coach John Hurstein and the Raiders. So here is Coach Hurstein at the podium talking about the Raiders. First, I want to thank uh, Coach Vernon for come on over here, guys. A couple of, there you go. For uh, putting this on. This is a first class event, a great opportunity to showcase a lot of great players here in the state and particularly in our in the OAA. Um, I'm gonna allow our guys to introduce themselves and I'll speak about the team for a moment. Justin Cross, senior <coughs> Ida linebacker. Uh Dylan Pedaway, senior O line D line. Dominic Washington, outside linebacker senior. Trey Thomas running back, outside All linebacker senior. Uh, Brendan Rice, North, uh, senior, D-line, O-line. You know, a lot like everybody else, the guys are putting a lot of work. Uh, you know, some similar thoughts to what you've heard where, you know, some of these guys got some experience really early on, uh, back during the COVID time, and they've stuck with it and been uh, a key part to us as we continue to build. I'm excited to see what these, this group of guys can do. They put the work in, the core guys are ready, and, uh, you know, looking forward to getting, in, getting into the season. We open up with Livonia Stevenson, uh, and then we get into the OAA. I hope everyone, best of luck in your non-conference games. Represent the, the league well, and uh, go Raiders. I sadly did not get an interview with Coach Hurstein, but I did get a podcast interview with him. So here is my podcast interview with Coach John Hurstein. Um, when you look at you guys last, when you look at you guys, it's been like, the last three years has not been really, it's been on, it's been on Raider like, I mean, like, so talk about, you know, obviously last season and then, you know, with the, um, with what's been going on with North Farmington. Yeah. Well, you know, over the, through the pandemic and I know a lot of other teams, they kind of experienced a little downturn in the number of kids and we, we had a little bit of that, but I think, uh, our numbers are trending, trending back in the right direction, so that's exciting. We got a, a good group of uh, juniors, or seem to be seniors now, I should say, seniors that have played varsity football uh, off and on for the uh, last two two seasons. So, um, uh, you know, we really think pretty highly of them, and are excited to see what what they're able to do. All right, yeah. before I let you go, before I let you go, coach, um, what is your expectations to your coach? Let's expect the guys to compete hard. I think we got a great schedule um, against a lot of really good teams that, you know, games could go a lot of different ways, but I want our guys to compete to the end, play to the end, uh, finish games strong. Um, I thought we did, you know, I thought kids played harder last year and that was exciting. I expect us to build upon that and, uh, and, and come out and compete. Um, just excited for the season. North Farms and Coach John Hurstein here. Thank you for joining us this week here on the podcast. I uh, wish you guys the best of luck, and I will see you at Media Day. Sounds good. Thanks, Sammy. Have Take a good care. one. Yep. When you look at the Raiders this year, you look at, of course, the quarterback situation, Terrence James there. Um, you look at Duke Blanchett running back. You have um, TJ Alexander. Um, their defense looks to be improved. And also, you look at the schedule that North Farmton has this year, opening up week one with Lavonia Stevenson at Lavonia Stevenson. Um, these are two teams that are familiar with one another, um, based on the old KLA. Um, obviously, of course, that was the league that North Farmington was in before they came to the OA in 2002. Um, so that should be a fun matchup between the, um, 
Falcons and the Spartans, uh, the Raiders and the Spartans. Um, that should be a really, really interesting matchup there. Week two, they take on the Eagles of Ferndale. This is going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, Ferndale, when I look at this team here, this is a team that really, um, you know, got a lot of experience. Should be a good test over at Ron Holland. That should be a good test um, for sure. Um, week three, the showdown I've been waiting for, the Farmington Cup. North Farmington wants that cup back after what happened two years ago in overtime. Um, it was a classic between those two teams. Um, but that should be a fun match between Farmington and North Farmington. Um, that should be a really, really unique matchup right there. Um, week number four, they take on Bloomfield Hills. Um, should be a fun one um, to keep an eye on. Of course, last year, Bloomfield Hills knocked off North Farmington 50-49 in overtime. That game's at Ron Holland this year. So, you know, I know North Farmington will be looking for a measure of revenge in that game. Week number five, they take on Troy Athens. Um, that should be a really unique matchup. I think, you know, wing T team against a, um, a, a well-experienced team like North Farm is going to have. And, of course, they have legendary coach John Harrington as well. So, you know, so that as that experience that Coach Herstein has for um, North Farmington. Week number six, they take on Oak Park. Um, two, again, these two teams, no stranger to one another. Um, should be a fun matchup there. Week seven, they take on Seaholm. Fun matchup between a team that runs a veer. And the next two matches, Seaholm's going to be seeing teams that run the – North Farm's going to be seeing teams that run the veer. I mean, week seven against Seaholm. Um, week eight, they take on Adams. And both teams run the veer option, the triple option. Um, that is one of the most hardest defenses to cover. So if you're Coach Herstein, you have two weeks to focus on teams that run the triple option offense, what they're going to see. And then week nine, they take on Troy um, to close out the year. So when you look at North Farmington, their schedule is tough. I mean, you really look at it. So when I look at the Raiders, there is some questions, especially at quarterback. Is Terrence James the answer? That's a big question. So as I mentioned, with Farmington, you can also catch the Raiders also on Farmington TV 10 this year. So, you know, Farmington and North Farmington, of course, their games are covered with the public access channel, Farmington TV 10. So shout out to them as, you know, focusing on the um, Raiders and the um, Falcons this season in the city of Farmington. So North Farmington, I think they're going to be a really dangerous team this year. So we'll see what happens with them going forward. Now let's go from Farmington to Oak Park. And when you look at the Knights here, last few years they've not been the same team since the um, Warren D. LaSalle game back in um, 2021. So here's Oak Park coach Greg Carter to talk about the state of the Knights. Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, it's always a great turnout. Um, this league is well represented by the players and also the coaches. Um, I've been coaching high school football a long time and I can definitely uh, be a, a, uh, someone who can ver uh, validate the fact that this league is, is so tough and it prepares you for um, you know, things in, in the future. Um, you know, again, uh, regular season games are very, very difficult. It prepares you in a strong way to go a long way in a tournament and our teams, we're so proud of the champions that we've had. Um, our team um, is up and coming. Um, you know, being one of the top teams in the OAA a few years ago, we are definitely motivated to get back to that level. Um, our kids are working tremendous, you know, they've worked tremendously hard this summer. Um, we're very excited about the outcome. We've got a lot of guys here who um, are still underclassmen but been playing for a while. So we've got three uh, juniors here that have started every game that we played. And we've got a sophomore running back who was our starter last year. So we're still a young team developing, uh, feel good about the future. Uh, we've had a great summer, and we're looking forward to our first game. So um, down to my left, a sophomore running back, Mike Jones. Standing next to him is Ryan Dre Ostian, who's a two-year starter for us. Um, next to me is Quentin Blakely, who's a running back, defensive back, and our uh, offensive and defensive end and tackle. On the other end is Will Reed. So we are very ex excited about this upcoming season. Uh, again, we've uh, had a difficult summer as far as uh, practice locations, but we've made it work. So I'm really tremendously proud about the effort they've put in 
to put in the necessary work to be a competitive team in the OAA. Uh, thanks a lot to Rochester for always doing a great job in this event. And uh, everybody have good luck this season and stay healthy. Oak Park was a team that finished with, they had a lot of freshmen and sophomores last year. Now they're up, now they're up a notch, you know, in, in them class. So when you look at Oak Park, you know, there's a lot to be excited for. And when I talk to Coach Greg Carter, um, he, he really looks forward to the excitement that this team can bring when I interviewed him. I got the coach of the Oak Park Knights, Coach Greg Carter here. I'm hanging in there, yeah. you coach. Um, last season, you guys were very young last year, so a lot of learning curves for this team heading into this season. Yeah, uh, we still have a young team, but they do at least have game experience. Um, they've worked extremely hard this offseason, and we've got some guys that are stepping up to be leaders, so we're still young as all outdoors. I think we only have like eight seniors, uh, but I think our, you know the experience that they've gained over the last couple of years of playing is going to really help them. Talk about your quarterback situation when you look at Oak Park. I mean, like, you guys are loaded with skilled guys, proven skilled guys. Lions a little bit of a question mark, but, yeah. you know, how's the quarterback situation going? Uh, it's a battle between three young men that are really fighting out. And, of course, camp will uh, determine who's going to play. So they're talented. Uh, they can throw the football. They're not just athletes. So we're excited. You know, they've worked extremely hard over the, over the offseason. Uh, they worked out with a lot of the quarterback coaches in the area, and then they had to deal with me. So they, they, I think our quarterback uh, situation will be a lot better than it's been in the last three, four years. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, of course, our expectation is always to win our league first and then get a position in the state tournament. We haven't been in it in a while, so that's our motivation, and that's our goal is to win our league and to get into the state tournament and, and represent the OAA. Thank you really much, Coach. Oh, you're welcome. All right, my brother. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Oak Park this year, um, this, you know, I think Oak Park's a very dangerous team when you look at them on paper. Um, quarterback's the issue, um, lineman's an issue. So when you look at the schedule, it looks manageable. I mean, like, it's not as tough as years past. I mean, when you look at Oak Park, over up the year with Farmington, that's a really interesting matchup. That game could go a long way to determine how, what the season would go like for Oak Park. So, you know, that'll be a law, that'll be telling. So. That should be a fun matchup week one between them and Farmington. Um, week two, they take on Royal Oak, and that's going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, these are two teams that haven't seen each other in a while. I think this is going to be an interesting matchup of different styles. Um, Royal Oak's a team that likes to run the ball a lot. Oak Park, we know they've got athletes. Um, week three, they take on Troy Athens. Um, that should be a fun matchup. Um, they've had some close battles in the past. Um, week four, they take on Seaholm, um, the Veer going up, and actually two coaching matchups. Um, you got Coach Ewald going up against Coach Carter, which that should be really interesting there. Um, week number five, they take on Troy, and I think this could be an interesting matchup, to say the least, how that one will go. And I think that should be a, that'll be a fun matchup, to say the least, there. Um, week six, they take on North Farmington. Um, the Raiders are a team, you know, that should be, again, the coaching matchup between Coach Herstein and Coach Carter. That should be a fun matchup. These two teams have played each other in the Summer League in Summer Ball, 7-on-7. Seven seven. So these two teams know each other quite well there. Week 7, they take on Lapeer. Lapeer, a perennial power in the um, Saginaw Valley. Um, they got a new coach in Anthony Merlo taking over that program. Um, Lapeer, a little bit different than they've been in years past. But they've been, an, they've been a perennial playoff team. And that should be a fun matchup with Lapeer traveling down to Night Valley to take on Oak Park. Um, week eight, they go to Oxford to take on the Wildcats. It was not a fun experience for them last year. Um, Oak Park was um, hammered by Oxford last year. It was not a pretty sight there in that game. And then week nine, they take on Bloompy Hills, which should be a fun matchup between two teams, you know what I mean, with those two teams. So it'll be really interesting to see with Oak Park. I mean, like, I think Oak Park, you know, they're a dangerous team this year. They could surprise some people this year, especially with the youth that they have on this team. And I think Oak Park's a team that can make some serious, serious noise this year. Can they be a playoff team? Yeah. I mean, that schedule looks manageable. I mean, like, but they're going to have to win some games this year. So we'll see what happens with them going forward. So that's my take on the Knights. Let's focus on the Maples of Birmingham Seaholm. Last year, this team, I mean, they won the blue last year. Um... Made a, made a run in the playoffs. Unfortunately, lost in the district final water for Mott. Um, so 
Coach Jim Debo was not in media day, but new boys basketball coach Spencer Adams was, and he steps to the podium. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, just like Coach Flaherty, we want to thank Rochester uh, for putting this on and for you folks for being here and, you know, putting a big spotlight on the game. Um, we really appreciate that, and, you know, our kids work hard, and so you guys kind of showing the impact of high school sports to the, to the greater masses is important. Um, I'm going to let the guys introduce themselves, and then we'll kind of talk you through what we look like for 2024. Patrick Hughes, quarterback junior. Uh, Finn Rowland, uh, senior quarterback in DB. Nathan Walsh, senior safety wide receiver. Matt Ernie, senior awesome offensive guard and defense back. Good. We also have Alejandro Roth with us, who's a linebacker slot. Um, and he'll play a big role for us too. My name's Spencer Adams. I'm our defensive coordinator. Um, I've been at Seaholm for six years. Coach DeWald is going into his 13th year. Um, in those 13 years, he's kind of established a, a pretty clear culture at Seaholm. Um, teams, I think, in this room know what to expect uh, when they play Seaholm High School, and a lot of that gets reflected by these guys and their work ethic in the off season. Um, we've had a great off season this year. Uh, we are losing a lot of a lot of starters from last year's team um, but you know these guys have been in the weight room for the last four years um, you know waiting for their time to shine and you know it, I'm excited for them uh, to get to put that on display on Friday nights uh, in front of our community and in front of our school um, and continue to make Birmingham see home proud so uh, we look forward to the 2024 season uh, good luck to everybody and uh, um, go represent the OAA well So I did not get an interview with um, Seahome coach Jim Dewald. He was not at media day, but I did get a podcast interview with coach Dewald to talk about the Maples heading into the season. Then talk about Groves. I mean, like I had coach Flaherty on earlier here on the podcast, um, talking about that rivalry. I mean, the, talk about the rivalry between Groves and your eyes. I mean, oh, we talked a lot about it last year, but you know, just give like a little refresher to everybody. Yeah, it's a, uh... It's about as uh, heated rival as you can get. Um, I think you have two really, really good teams in the same city um, that I think uh, both do things well at, at what they do. Um, you know, they do what they do and we do what we do. And we believe in our systems. Um, we believe in um, fighting for the community and, and, and playing for the community and playing for the schools. And um, it's a heated, heated rival. And, you know, and last year we were, we got the best of it uh, for two games in a row, but you know, it's obviously we've been on the other side of the coin a lot as well. Um, they'll be pretty good. I mean, they, they lose the quarterback, but they got, you know, the, the receiver, the little, the, uh, little, the last name, little kid. Yep. Uh, not, not a little kid, but his last name is little. Yeah. His last name's little. So, yes. I know. Yeah. Um, and obviously they Chris got the, the gat, the gatch kid. Yep, is, Avery Gat. Yep. You know, yeah, he's the real deal. Um, shit. We, oh, shoot. Sorry. Let me say that. Uh, oh. We, I remember him as a sophomore. I mean, he was the real deal as a sophomore, and uh, he's only getting better. So, you know, that's that's uh, something we have to deal with going down the line. They have a, you know, they they do a good job offensively, and defensively, and you know, it's it's a it's, it's a solid program, and I, I I love it. I love the rivalry. I love the, the 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 heatedness of it. I love playing at the end of the year. Um, nothing nothing's better i mean nothing speaks more about high school football than that game and i'm sure there's a lot of other rivals and you know like clarkston lake orion type of thing and and there's other rivals that that uh are just as heated but uh i think it makes high school football and i love it before i let you go coach um what is your expectations this year heading into the season for c home well I, I i i like to believe we got a you know we got a pretty good schedule i like to say that uh, we can get we can squeak in with, you know, maybe five or six wins um, into the playoffs and see where we go from there. Um, I just, I think the, the style of offense we play keeps us in many games and, you know, you never know how the ball will bounce. So, you know, are we going to be as good as we were last year? No, I mean, I'd that, be lying to myself and everyone if we, we were going to be that good. But um, I think we have a bunch of kids that are working hard. I think that we'll try to play keep away with the ball like we always do and uh, see where the game leads us in the fourth quarter. You know, if we're in the fourth quarter, up a score, down a score, tied, I like our chances. Okay, now when, we're, when we look at Seaholm, obviously the, um, they run that Veer offense. There's some questions everywhere. They lost a lot of talent, a lot of experience. Um, so when you look at the schedule that Coach Jim Dewalt has this year, 
They open up the year week one against Troy Athens. A battle of the misdirection against Severe, which is going to be really interesting um, considering, you know, the first two weeks for Seaholm, they open up against teams that run the um, wing T offense, the misdirection offense. I mean, Abaddon week two, that's going to be really interesting too. Um, they're another team that runs that offense with a lot of proven athletes on that team over there at Avondale. So two games early on against two teams that run the wing T offense. Um, week three, they take on a team that runs a spread in Bloopy Hills. Um, that should be a really interesting matchup of two different styles. Um, week number four, um, they take on Oak Park. Um, this is a really interesting matchup between the Knights and the, um, and the uh, Maples. I mean, that should be a really interesting matchup. Seaholm knocked off Oak Park last year in, in the um, Maple Forest. Um, so now they go to Knight Valley for week four. Week five, they take on Farmington. It's another interesting matchup. Um, Farmington, of course, is a spread team. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there in that one. Week number, um, and then the schedule gets really gets tough in October. I mean, they take on Troy week number six. That's a difficult matchup there. Um, week seven, they take on North Farmington. That's going to be a daunting task. And then the final two games, oh my goodness gracious. Heading to the swap week eight against West Bloomfield. That's going to be tough. And then week nine, the rivalry game. They got to go to Falcon Field to take on Groves. So when you look at for the, the challenge for Coach Jim Dewald, that is not an easy schedule. Groves, is, the Seahawks got to see this year, especially when you got to play West Bloomfield Week Eight, Groves Week Nine, and you have Abbeville for your Week Two matchup. And then that's not mentioning the rest of the league. It is a very difficult schedule for um, Seahawks coming up when you look at that schedule um, for the Maples. So a challenging task awaits the Maples and Coach Jim Dewald this season. So. A lot to look forward to if you're a Maple fan, but you got to replace a lot of talent. And, you know, you got to have a new quarterback, new running back. It's going to be a very interesting experience to see for Seaholm as we head into the season. So a lot of question marks when I look at the Maples um, heading into the year. So let's look at our last team here in the blue, and that's the Troy Colts. And when you look at the Colts this year, um, last season – They've had, they were, they had a winning year, 5-4, lost on the final play to Frazier, which 20-19, which cost them a trip to playoffs. So here's Troy coach Chris Frazier at the podium talking about the state of the Colts. First off, uh, thanks again for Rochester for hosting us. My name is Chris Frazier. I'm the head coach at Troy High. I'm going to let my uh, senior leaders introduce themselves. Joe Peacock, wide receiver. Greg Tessier, the senior linebacker. My name is Noah Irie. I'm the quarterback. Lucas State, offense line. So obviously, just like everyone else, we're excited for the upcoming year, right, Lucas? Um, I'm going to take my 30 seconds, and I just want to thank my guys and all of you for all the hard work that you put in. Without you guys doing all that work, us old guys couldn't stick around the game, which we love. I know we expect a lot out of you, both on the field, in the classroom, in the weight room, watching film, things like that. So from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate all the work that my guys do and all the work that you guys do to make this game such a great thing. So again, stay healthy this year. Good luck to all of you. I wish the best for everyone. Thanks again. Bye. I did not get an interview with Coach Jim Frazier, but I do have a podcast interview with Coach Frazier um, that we filmed a couple weeks ago. So here is Coach Chris Frazier and me talking on the podcast. And then when you look at coming into the year, people look at Troy, people look at Troy and like you know they there's a lot of expectations with Troy. So what is your expectations this year? And um, you, it looks like the division this year looks like it's evenly stacked in your eyes. So what's your early thought process when you look at the division? So our expectation every year, continue this year, is to compete every game. And whether we win or lose, we just want to compete. So as the coach, that's. That's what I stand for, and that's what I say. That, you know, the score is going to take care of itself in the game. We just want to compete. And if you compete and it ends up being 100 nothing the other team and you put our first best foot forward, then so be it. And if we compete and we win 100 nothing, then so be it. But we want to make sure that every game we're doing the best that we can to, to be able to sing our fight song on Friday night. And when you look at the atmosphere of Troy, um, talk about the atmosphere, the community impact of Troy um, going into a football game on Friday night. Friday night football is something that you can't replicate, and it seems like school 
spirit, school mentality, the way the kids act, the way the community acts is way more positive when it's a, it's a successful season and successful, you know, successful games. So, you know, obviously we, we're trying to do our part to, to make kids have a positive experience in school. So part of that is enjoying Friday nights and enjoying coming to the game and being with your friends and doing all those things. Um, one final question before I let you go, Coach. Um, any change to uniforms this year? Are you guys going with the um, – I, I love the all-black look and the all-white look on the road. Um, any any change to uniform this year? Uh, our uniforms will be the same, but uh, we went with a different uh, helmet color. So we, we got rid of the glossy black and we've gone to the matte black. So that's the only change we made. Oh, I like I like that combination. I like that. I like that helmet. Um, before I let you go, I mean, like um, – when you look at Troy this year, um, you know, when you look at the division, um, what is your thought process when you look at the division, how it is this year in the blue? To be honest with you, like, all of our focus right now is on Bloomfield week one. And, uh, you know, like, I mean, any coach will tell you whether it's the Detroit Tigers or Troy High football, if you can be 1-0 going into week two or you can be 1-0 going into game two of the baseball season, it's – it's a whole different feeling. So that's that's our focus right now is making sure that we can do whatever we can to to be able to you know be successful week one, and then we'll let t- week two take care of itself after that. Okay, yeah, Troy coach Chris Frazier here. Thank you for joining us this week. I will see you at media day on Friday. See you at media day. I appreciate it. You too. Bye. When you look at Troy this year, there's a lot of questions. Obviously, they got a three. They got three proven players in them. Lucas Tick up front. You've got Jalen Peacock at wide receiver in the secondary and Noah Ori at quarterback. I do got some serious concerns at running game with Troy. I mean, there is some question marks. And people look at Troy and say, well, you know, you know, they're with the schedule that they played last year, it really what really didn't really test them last year. And it was really evident when you look at it, at that from last year. So when you look at the schedule this year, they toughened up the schedule. Opening up the year with Bloompia Hills and Pontiac, um, really, you know what I mean, those are two games that look winnable for Troy. I think the Pontiac game might be tricky for them, um, it, but that'll be a home game. But we're going to know a lot about them week three. When they go on the road, they go visit Lake Orion to take on the Dragons. That is a very difficult matchup for Troy, considering the firepower that Lake Orion has. So we're going to know a lot about Troy week three on Orient Able Television um, when Troy goes to Lake Orient to take on the Dragons. Um, week four, they take on Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory. That is going to be really interesting. Notre Dame Prep was a playoff team last year. Um, had a lot of success. I mean, like, so it'll be another really tall order for Coach Chris Frazier and the Colts. Um, with the concerns I have with their depth, that's a serious concern I have with them. So that'll be really interesting to see how, you know, those two games are going to be the key games I look at for Troy is can they, can they, you know, overcome that? If they can go two, I mean, like, it wouldn't surprise me if they go two and two in that stretch. I mean, like, it really wouldn't surprise me. And then week, and then they, and then week five, they take on Oak Park, which is going to be a really interesting matchup. Oak Park, um, you know, and Troy, Two different styles. It should be a really interesting matchup um, between those two teams there. Uh, week six, they take on Seaholm. Um, that'll be a really interesting matchup there in that one. I mean, like, of course, Seaholm is a team that we know runs a veer. Um, week seven, they take on Farmington. Um, that should be a fun matchup there. Two teams, you know what I mean, have different styles. Um, I think it'll be an interesting game. Week eight is the rivalry game with Troy Athens. That'll be at Troy this year. Um, which Troy's had the best of Troy Athens the last few years. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at that matchup, it should be a really interesting matchup considering the experience Troy Athens has. At, I mean, Troy obviously has the, um, the star power there, obviously, with Peacock, Ori, and um, Tick. And then week nine to close out the year, Oak Park takes on North Farm. That's like Troy takes on North Farmington. Um, that's going to be a really interesting matchup there. Um, coaching match between Coach Frazier and Coach Herstein. Um, so that should be a really, really interesting matchup there. For Troy this year, program strength to me is a big concern. I'm worried about that with them. Um, they got some questions at running back, and I said that earlier, and I think that's going to be where I think the big question mark is going to be for Troy. 
um, going forward. So, you know, with that, with, that, with that being said, let's look at the blue projections heading into the year. I mean, obviously, you look at the records here, and I think um, far, I think Farmington's the favorite in this division. I, I, I think that the Falcons really, you know, I like Julian Johnson at quarterback. Got him coming back. Um, I think it's going to be huge for them to keep an eye on. Oak Park, I had them at 6-3. and three. Um, fin- I mean, having a, re- a redemption tour, I think. Um, I think Oak Park's a team that, you know, being in Division Two for the playoffs, that's going to be a big deal for them. Um, and I think they'll make some noise in that. North Farmington, I think they're going to have a revenge tour. They're going to get back in the playoffs as well. I really like where they're at. I mean, Duke Blanchett running back. You've got Terrence J- you got TJ Alexander. Um, you've got a lot of proven athletes on that team over there at North Farmington. And, I, and also, you, you have Coach Hurstein. You know, they're going to be hungry to get back into the playoffs. So that'll be really interesting to see there. Troy, I just look at them and I say it to myself, depth, depth, depth. I mean, that's really going to be the challenge for them is can this team find depth? That is the big question mark I have with um, with the Colts. I mean, like, yes, you've got the quarterback. Yes, you have the proven receiver. And yes, you have the proven lineman. Running game is a big concern for me, especially when you get into October and November, where you're, especially in the October when it starts getting cold. And I think... That's going to be a challenge I see for Troy this year. Um, Seaholm, I think I see him taking a step back this year, especially with the um, with losing all those seniors. It's it's going to be a challenging year for them um, when I look at them. Troy Athens, yes, the experience, but I just don't know about the mental mindset with Troy Athens. That's the big question mark I have with them. And I think you know when I look at the Red Hawks, there is some questions I have mentally with them, and I think that's going to be the um, Despite having a star player, Nathan Piggott, um, you got the Dunlap brothers, obviously, but I just don't know if I see. And, and anytime in a wing T, it's not as easy as you think it is, especially they need more balance, I think, obviously, with Troy Athens. I think that's going to be the key for them is can they find the balance. If they find the balance, I think they can win more than two games than I have projected there for them. So they, they and Seahome probably have the biggest upside to go up. And then Bluebeal Hills, like I said, this team – they got some issues. There's some question marks with them. I mean, I just don't know if I see Bluebeal Hills really making noise this year. I mean, there's a lot of questions with them um, heading into the year. I just don't think that um, they're going to be – I'm just not sold. I mean, like, I, I just think that they're going to really struggle this year. So when you look at the division here, it's a pick division. It, I mean, it's really a pick division. I mean, any team in this division can win it. I mean, Troy Atkins has a case. Seaholm's got a case, Troy's got a case, North Farms has got a case, Oak Park's got a case, Farms has got a case. So I would say right now, out of the teams in this division, I would say six of the seven teams here have a chance to win the division. I mean, that's how I'm looking at it right now when I look at this division. Uh, the top ten teams to start the year, um, you look at Farmington, I had them ranked tenth to start the year. I think Farmington really, um, they lost a lot. Of t- I mean, like, they um, had a rough year in the white. Um, now they're in the blue. I think Farmington's one of the teams that are favoring this division. Obviously, you got Harper Woods, West Bloomfield, um, Adams, Lake Orion, Clarkson, Oxford, Groves, Avondale, Stony Creek. Um, Avondale in the gold division, Stony Creek um, in the white. Um, Harper Woods is in the white. And then you have everybody else, is in, and then Groves is also in the white. So then everybody else is in the red division. Basically, that's the kids of that division. So, you know, so when you look at the top 10, I think it makes a lot of sense. So, We'll see what happens going forward as we um, look at the end season in the OA Blue. So, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay for easy at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you then. God bless. Everybody.